chapter 19 is a really interesting chapter. It deals with amines. Amines are very common in nature and seen in lots of natural products and also in biochemistry. So to start off, we're going to look at an introduction and then we'll talk about nomenclature today. So amines can be classified into primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, or just ammonia by themselves. So let's take a look down here below. So ammonia, of course, is just NH3. If we have one R group here attached to the nitrogen, we have a primary amine. All right, two R groups is a secondary amine. All right, three is a tertiary, and four, in this case, leads to a formal positive charge here, and we call that a quaternary ammonium ion, four bonds. Right? So as far as uh, amines found in nature, we see them in all sorts of molecules that you may be familiar with. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, epinephrine is adrenaline hormone, tryptophan is an amino acid, um, where we have peroxidine, vitamin B6, histamine, right, dilates blood vessels. You've heard of antihistamines. Um, and they're also part of um, proteins. So proteins are composed of amino acids. And amino acids have this amino group on them and then a carboxylic acid functional group. So when you put those two together, you have amino acids. Okay. Now it turns out that this part of the carboxylic acid can react with another NH2 of an amino acid. So they can link together. And when they do, you form um, Di, a dipeptide if they, if it was just two, if it was three, it'd be a tripeptide or a polypeptide if many are linked together. So what that ends up looking like when we connect these two molecules together is you get your amino group, here's your R group. That R group can be different things. We're gonna be connected to a carbonyl and that then undergoes a reaction in which we form a bond to a nitrogen so you see an NH here, and then that NH is connected to a carbon with an H atom and an R. So there's another side chain of your um, of your peptide, and then a, another carbonyl, and then so on and so forth, right? And that continues on. Now this type of bond that we're seeing right here in biochemistry is known as a peptide bond. Right. In organic chemistry, we call it an amide bond. Right. So that's an amide functional group. So we'll look at this reaction as we go through the next three chapters, and we'll talk more about protein chemistry when we get into chapter 23, too. All right, now, let's take a brief moment here, and let's talk about nomenclature. Well, the nomenclature turns out to be um, fairly straightforward because it's based off of those same rules that we learned way back in chapter number uh, three. So we find the longest carbon chain which contains the carbon attached to the nitrogen. So the NR3 where the R could be um, alkyl groups or it could be hydrogens. That's your parent number nearest, right? that amine group. And then we add the suffix number number Parent and amine, right? Or an number number amine. Of course, if it was an alkene, then it would be an N, so on and so forth. The rest is simple. We add um, substituent names. Um, then we add the name of um, other alkyl groups, for example, the nitrogen. And we do that by saying that they're N substituted. So it's N dash. Right, methyl, if there's a methyl group sticking off of it. 
And then for complicated carbon chains, that is for molecules that have higher priority functional groups, such as carboxylic acids, we name the NH2 group as an amino um, substituent. So let's look at this example here down below. So here we have a molecule that is four carbons. So it's going to be a butte. So we know this much. And it's an alkane. So it'll be a butan, right? And then off of carbon one, two, because we want to number it so it has the lowest possible number, right? You have an amine. So putting that together, you get butan 2 amine, or 2 butanamine. Either of those are acceptable. And we're not done yet because remember we have stereochemistry to determine around that carbon. Right, so figuring that out, that's number 1, this side's number 2, that side's number 3, number 4 pointing away from you here. So that is moving around in a clockwise direction, which is R. So this is R butan 2 amine, or R 2 butan amine. Right? Now, there's some common names here too, and the common names um, are going to be similar to naming ethers in the sense that we name the alkyl groups as alkyl alkyl amines essentially. So if you look at that first compound here below, well, let's see if we can name this based on the common names. Well, this is an ethyl. This is an ethyl and obviously here we have a methyl. So we don't have to call this an ethyl ethyl methylamine. When we have two we say di. So then this would simply be a di ethyl methyl um, amine. Right. Looking over to our, the right hand side, the IUPAC name of this thing, well, what's the longest carbon chain? Two, two carbons. So eth is the longest carbon chain. So we have an eth here. All right. It's an ethane. So it's a, we'll call it an ethan for right now. We drop that E. And then we want to name um, the substituents. Well, sticking off of this, you have an N-methyl, and then you have an N-ethyl. Right, so this would be either side, really, would be your parent. And then you have a methyl and an ethyl sticking off of your nitrogen as substituents. So then the full name of this, putting that all together, would be n ethyl, right, alphabetical priority, N methyl ethan amine. Right? We don't have to say where that is because it's just two carbons there, right? Um, now looking down below, the common name of this is an isopropyl. So the group sticking off of that nitrogen is an isopropyl. So this would simply be isopropyl amine. And then the IU pack of that, well, prop, right? It's, a, it's an alkane, so prop an. And then off of carbon number two, you have an amine. So then this would be prop an two amine or 2-prop-anamine. Well, we could make this a little bit more interesting looking down here below. So molecules that are more complicated like this, um, there's not really a, a common name. Common names are going to be simple alkyl substituents, not complex with stereocenters, for example. So let's see what we can do here. So step number one, longest carbon chain. So uh, one, two, three, four, five. So here we have five, so that means it's going to be a pent. It's not a pent-an, right? It's an alkene, so it's a pent-ene. 
All right, so now we go through, we number this thing closest to this side, so one, two, three. All right, so with our three here, that's a three in. That's a two amine. And then we have a methyl group here off of the nitrogen. So an N methyl. And then we also have a methyl here off of carbon number four. All right, so a four methyl. Now what we do is we combine those together into um, a four comma N dimethyl. And I don't really care there if you um, if you call this an N4 or a 4N dimethyl. Both of those are fine. So then putting that those pieces together that we have here, this is going to be 4 comma N. Dimethyl. And then it's a pent. And now it's a, it's not a pentane, it's a pent three in. Right, and then a two amine. And right, so that two group there is an amine group. Right, and we're not totally done yet because what we have to do here is we have to figure out stereochemistry. So let's go through and do that together. So as we look at this, get rid of these numbers so they don't mess us up. So nitrogen's number one, this side's number two, um, and then uh, this side's number three, and our H is number four pointing back from us. So it's moving around that direction. That is the S direction. So this is S. All right, now the only other thing that we have left that we need to discuss is we need to discuss some common names and then how to name these ammonium salts. So we have the, the following five common names. We've seen aniline before, pyridine, pyrrolidine, pyrrole, papyridine. Um, all these are compounds that you should basically be familiar with because they're compounds that come up in the common language of organic chemistry. Now naming the salts is actually based on G chem rules. So NH3 is ammonia, NH4 is ammonium. So salts, that is compounds that have charges, will be named as ammonium salts. So we name all the carbon groups attached to the nitrogen as alkyl groups. And then we simply add the, the name ammonium to the end, and then we name the anion. So if we look here, at this first molecule. Here we have um, how many? One, two, three. There's three methyls, right? So three is tri. So this would be trimethyl. Um, and it is an ion, so trimethyl ammonium. And then this is sulfide. And so here we've taken a structure and come up with a name. Let's see if we can take a name and come up with a structure here. So dimethyl ammonium. So we have a nitrogen and we have one, two, um, two methyls there. And then we have to adjust the number of H's to give us four bonds because that gives us the ammonium ion. And then chloride, Cl minus. So fairly straightforward.